Hello, 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 Karen here. Today we are going to start a new handmade art journal and we are going to do something very unique with the pages. We are going to be using old book pages, old magazine pages, and tissue paper to cover them to make some really unique backgrounds for our art journal. Are you ready to get started? Great, let's go down to my desktop and see what kind of materials you'll want to gather for doing this. You will need some matte medium. I am using a Liquitex matte medium and I put it in a little jar like this because I want to dip my paintbrush in there. You'll also want a nice wide brush. You'll want a variety of tissue papers, some scissors for trimming the edges, and a variety of papers to glue or adhere your tissue papers to. For this, I have chosen a whole bunch of pages from used books. Some of them are magazine pages. Another thing, I didn't grab these, but another one that's really good is coloring books. You know all those coloring books? Whether you've colored in them or not, they make really great backgrounds for this technique. You'll also want some sheets of wax paper and a heavy book or magazine. We're gonna be using these for pressing them. If I did not press the, this overnight, it would all be all curled up and, and, and wrinkled. Just gonna pick a page to start with. Open up my matte medium. So what you'll want to do is to take your tissue paper. You might just tear off a, a little section of it. You might even get a few different ones to get started. Make sure you're at one, one sheet and not two. These, the hard edges like that can be really good to line up on your pages, but you know, it's okay to go off because you've got your scissors to trim up those. And whenever you overlap, you know, um, you might want to be conscious of the colors that they make when they overlap. So if I overlapped uh, like a yellow over this purple, or maybe not over, but under it, I could make more of a brown, right? But if it's on the blue, it's gonna make more of a green. And you can get as colorful as you want with this, but you can also just use white tissue paper. So you can have a nice little variety like that. And you don't have to uh, lay them all out like this before you start gluing, but you know, you might want to. I generally just start gluing things down, but today I just decided to do it that way. So I'm gonna get some matte medium on my brush and I'm gonna brush the background. This is why it comes in handy to have a nice wide brush because you can get it down without it drying before you get your tissue paper down. You're gonna to want to put the matte medium on the bottom and on the top. So you put a layer down you go over it with some more matte medium. And this is why it doesn't always work out if you try to do the edges. It's really hard to get it to line up. So it's better to just, you know, let it lay down more organically. Now in this case, I just had a little bit of, of edges that went over. I'm not gonna cut those until the, the matte medium is dry. Otherwise, I'm gonna really gum up my scissors, which I have a really bad habit of doing. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them, I actually have this little board here. It's just a piece of cardboard. And I have a wax, piece of wax paper on the bottom because I don't want my paper to stick to my surface, right? So I'm gonna put it on a piece of wax paper and then I'm gonna put a piece of wax paper on top and grab another sheet. And this is how we're gonna work. Try not to get big gobs of this matte medium on the underside. 
And when you're brushing over the top, do it lightly. I actually have a really soft bristle brush. And if you are too rough with it, you're going to tear your tissue paper, which might not be the look you're going for. But you know, it, you never know. One of the things that I tend to do as well is I tend to avoid hard edges in the middle of my page. Our eyes are naturally att attracted to hard edges because they are not natural. They do not occur in nature, those straight hard edges and corners. So they attract your attention more because they might be a sign of danger. And this is where some of those textured ones, you have a couple of hard edges there. I might take this and, and try to cover those up. Now I do have a pretty big flap of tissue paper ho over here on the edge. But, and so instead of cutting it, I can tear it. And it'll tear away right at the edge because the edge of the tissue paper is wet. And then I will put this over on top of that wax paper that I put down and put another piece of wax paper on it. Today is part two. I have my big brush here. I have my scissors because today I'm going to trim the edges off of those pages and I have my matte medium. Underneath here I have my collage papers that I did and I pressed them under um, some heavy books so that they would be nice and flat. Otherwise they get all curled up. And as you can see, my wax paper comes off nice and clean. Nothing got stuck. I did end up putting a piece of paper in between things to just help absorb a little bit more moisture because the wax paper is only going to do so much. So today I'm going to go through these. I'm going to trim off the pages. I'm thinking that if I glue these together, then I'm going to get a sturdier page, which 
is making a lot of sense right now. So that is the direction that I'm going to go in. Today we get to bind our tissue paper journal. Everything is nice and dry. I have flattened them out so I've pressed them under some some heavy books and now it's time to bind them into an art journal. Okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my pages and I'm thinking that when you know if I if I took this and I just bound it like this right and I turn the pages. How is that going to look? All right. So what I can do is I can take my pages and try to kind of match them up. I think that might be good. So we've got blue and brown on this one. Okay, so that's that's close enough. I just kind of wanted to get a little bit of color match. So that when I turn the pages, it's not going to be like extremely off. It's certainly not going to match up perfectly, but I, th I like this. This is this is good. And what we're going to do after I bind it is we're going to do some techniques that are going to help to blend those pages and make them more cohesive. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fold each one of these in half. Now, these are made from different pieces of paper, and so they are not all the same size. Oh, and by the way, the ones on the end, so this is, this is going to be the cover or the inside. This is going to be the cover or the inside. I, I, I think I need to decide that, too. I think I'm going to make this super bright one the outside. Okay, everything's all together. Now I'm going to take a tool and poke holes in it. And I'm going to be trimming the edges of these so I don't want to get too close to the edge over here. Okay, now I'm just going to take some, some thread here. This is actually some embroidery thread. And I'm going to take two links, plus a little bit. Thread that through a needle. And I'm going to start on the outside, in the middle, go in, I'm going to leave my tails because I'm going to, that's where I'm going to make a knot. I'm going to go up to the top and go out. Oops. Careful not to lose my tail there. I'm going to go all the way up to the top. Holding my tail as I pull my yarn, my thread, and back through the middle. 
Now, when I'm when I tie this, I want this thread right here. I want these tails to one on each side. So when I when I tie it down, it ties it down. And then I'm just going to do a square knot. Okay, now I'm going to trim down my pages. I'm going to line this up on my cutting mat. I'm going to try to get some straight lines. I'm going to make sure that I've got all of the pages underneath. I'm actually going to cut through. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. And this might take a couple of passes because there's quite a bit of paper to go through. I can double check it, make sure that all of my layers are the same. That's good. And I was using this page as a guide, but it doesn't look to me like it is cut straight on there. So I'm going to Fold this inner page over like this. And cut this edge. Using that inner page as my guide. And that should give me the same same width on both of them. Of course, when you fold it, you know, it cascades a little bit, but you know, you could, if you really wanted to be particular about it, you could fold it over like that and cut again, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that. Lining up this edge on my guide, on my board, and then cutting to the lines on there. This is why you don't want to get too close to the edge with your threads. <laughs> now is that going to be straight? It's still a little off <laughs> and I don't know why, <laughs> but you know what? I'm just going to let it be what it is and, and I'm not going to worry about it. And it's good enough. It's not perfect. And you know, in a way, I think that is perfect. It not being perfect. You know, things that are perfect, it's, it's too intimidating. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a variety of things. I've got some stencils. I've got a bunch of paints. Now I've already selected out these colors and I selected them out by looking at the colors that I have on my pages already. All right. I've also got some stamps and some, I mean, some stamps, some ink <laughs> and some stamps. And so I've got uh, my cosmetic sponges for putting down my stencils and my paint. And I've got some more of my tissue paper out. I know this is a lot of stuff. My idea today <laughs> was to take these inner pages, because there's two different, they look different, right? How do I make these look cohesive? How do I bring them together? Well, I can start off with putting down a little bit of tissue paper that goes across, and um, if it goes on one side and the other, then, it, then that's gonna bring it together. So that's a good start. trying to be really careful about not using too much of this matte medium because I do want this to dry fairly quickly. I could take my paper towel roll and just kind of roll it over the top just to get rid of any excess and that's going to help it to dry a little faster as well. Put a sheet of wax paper in there. Turn the page 
And now I can do this one. And I think this, this is all I'm going to add to this page. This page is kind of feeling kind of a little dark. So I wonder what would happen if I added some white and then put a color on top of it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. So now this page doesn't need anything because it's the center and it's all the same. So we don't need to bring that together. So we're going to go right to the next one. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can add a little bit of this to each side. Like that. Or, I guess I should say and or, do it right over the center. If you do something on the center, I recommend that you also do it and maybe a couple of other places. <laughs> I am using the same sponge. Um, in some cases. So in this case, I was working with the orange and the yellow and I know that mixing those is going to, it's going to be fine. So I can keep using the same sponge. I did not keep using the sponge that I used the lavender and purple with because that would have just made brown and I didn't want brown. Well, now I want brown, <laughs> but I didn't when I first started, I wanted yellow. So I grabbed a clean sponge for that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on here.
Let's just see what we've got on the inside here. See what I mean about just adding the, I think the tissue paper did the most in making these cohesive and bringing these together. The stencils added another layer, not as, not as strong, which is good because you don't want everything to be like stand out, right? I think I could have done more with this center page. Like I didn't do any of the, the st stenciling. So let me see here. I've got some, some leftover. And I think it's just because I, I, I missed this page because it didn't have the, um, it had the wax paper wrapping on the outside. So it kind of got overlooked. You see how I didn't really realize that I missed something until I started flipping back through and seeing that, oh, yeah, something, something's amiss here. I can keep going through this. I woke up with this crazy idea and I just can't wait to try it out. So let's go down to my desktop and make this thing happen. I'm going to start tearing these pages up and you're like, what? <laughs> this is going to be cool or it's going to be a disaster. I don't know, but let's find out. So here we go. What you want to do is you want to take your pages and you want to tear them in a way that they cascade. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, and you'll get this with no matter what paper you get, you use, you'll get this little edge right here. <laughs> so that the la these last pages came out really crazy. I had absolutely no control. So this is why I call it this little cascading because you create this little storybook and the pages, you know, they cascade and they get bigger and bigger as you go. What to do with these? You're like, oh, you can't just throw those out. Of course, I'm not going to throw them out. These I could use as collage papers, right? Or I was thinking, why not re-glue them to the outside to make the cover? For now, I want to go ahead and play with this inside. So on these edges, I have these, these little raw edges here. And like I said, no matter what paper you use, you're going to get some sort of edging like that. And I want to bring out those edges a little bit more in a way that complements it. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and I'm going to put it behind. And we're just going to work on this edge. I've got some distress inks here and I've got some of these little sponge pads. Get out my purple one. I always save them in these little uh, baggies because then I can reuse the colors. So I've got my purple one here. And what you want to do is you want to take your ink pad, and get some ink on there really good. And then start adding the color to this edge. Now you could do this with something other than ink. You could do this with watercolor. And I'm just kind of, I'm going to blend it into the page just a little bit. But you see how that kind of really brings out that, that edge on there. And I'm going to turn the page and I'm going to pick a different color. And as you can see, you don't need to use distress inks. You can use really, I think any brand. I don't think it really matters. You just, this does get a little messy. You might want to wear gloves. 
And just make sure you're always putting down that scrap piece of paper behind it. Otherwise, you know, that it, it, it's going to get all over the place, right? I think you got that idea. <laughs> You'll notice that I am picking different colors for each of these. And like I said, this works just as well with, with watercolors. Not as well with um, acrylics, but, you know, work with what you've got. Get creative with what you have already. Okay, so now I do want to go back and do this last page. And I think I'm going to use this same blue. This is so fun. Ooh. Okay, one more. I want to do since I, I wanted since all my edges that kind of have that um, ink on them. Maybe I also make this do this edge like that. I'm thinking that if I am going to use these as the cover, maybe I should go ahead and do these. Although then I will have to do them on this, on the right sides. Because you notice on the back sides they don't have that little white edge on there. And that's all going to depend on which direction you tear it. Okay, so I always if you tear up like I did, you're going to get that. If you tear back, you're going to get this edge right right here. So you know always tear up. So if I if I want to use this for my cover, I might want to go ahead and and do these as well. I didn't think about that, but that's the that's the process, right? You, you know, it isn't about planning these things out, which is one of the reasons why I don't plan these videos. I work on, you know, I'm just inspired. I could make this so it kind of sticks out a little bit. That might be kind of cool. I think I will do that. So the first one I'm going to make stick out a little bit. So I do have my matte medium ready. I do suggest you use something stronger than a glue stick for this. By the way, did you know that on Sunday you can come join me on Zoom and share what you've been working in? Doesn't have to be this journal, just any art journal that you've been playing in. Come share in my community. We'd love to see. Something magical happens when we, when we share, I think. It brings out something that doesn't happen on its own. I have a feeling this one on the end is going to be a little harder to, it's going to be a little more challenging because it's, the paper does not want to curl over that edge. So what I might have to glue this in two parts, just glue this and then I might have to put a little bit of glue underneath that because if I push this down, that goes up. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I can, um, I can put a little bit of glue underneath that. So wowzers, I'm, I'm really happy that I decided to use that for the cover. That is pretty darn cool. Even though it's not perfect, it's got this weird little edge over here. I, I don't even care about that. How fun is that?
and I'm at the point where I'm going to write in it. Now I'm not just going to write just like stream of consciousness or intention or anything like that. I'm actually going to be picking a quote to write in here and then I'm going to be doing some intuitive collage and we'll just see what, what comes up, what happens. So the book that I have selected for my quote for today is One Year Wiser. This is a really amazing book. It's got 365, so a year's worth of illustrated meditations. I'd have to say the majority of them are quotes, if not all of them. And what this artist did in his, 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 yes, his journal was he took a quote and he did some artwork around it. So I actually turned to, because this is done on a, um, on a daily basis, and so I actually turned to today, which is September 1st, and I read the quote, and then I looked over on this page, and this is actually the one that resonated with me. Don't pay too much attention or take your emotions too seriously. What you feel is not who you are. Ariel Grunwald. Mm. That is the one that I'm going to use today. I am going to attempt to write this quote on these torn page edges. Anytime you do something like this, you're never quite too sure if it's going, if you're going to fit it all on there. In fact, I almost like wanted to pencil things in, you know, just to, you know, know that it's going to work out before I started. But I was like, nope, you're just going to go with it, Karen. So the pens that I have picked to do this with today are a Poshka pen. This is a, a medium. So not the fattest one. This is kind of like the in-between one. And then I have a one millimeter Poshka pen. And I'm going to actually do this twice. I'm going to write down the quote in, this is my idea anyway. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to write this in white and then I'm going to go over it in black. But I'm not just going to use my regular handwriting. Actually, I am, but I'm going to add a little twist to it to make it look a little bit different. And this is really an easy way to take your natural handwriting and I'm talking about cursive writing, but you might be able to make this work with, with block letters. I don't know, <laughs> with printing. But um, it's, it's a way of, you, you stretch out the lines in between the letters. Okay, here we go. See how I'm adding that extra long line in between the letters? So at this point, I've gotten um, about two thirds of the way through the quote and I only have one more tab left to write on. And now I could write on this whole thing, but I really want to keep it to this tab. So I'm going to have to shorten this quote at the end. So I have, don't pay too much attention or take your emotions too seriously. And that is a complete sentence. I have a period there. The, the last part is what you feel is not who you are. So I could shorten that to you are not your emotions. You are not your feelings. So how would that play out? You are not your, and I could just do one, one more here. So I have my quote, my modified quote on there. I'm actually liking it like that. I was thinking I would go over it with the black pen, but I, I actually just like it just like this. And the reason why I, I'm thinking is because this is everything on here. There's, it's kind of a low contrast, right? There's, there's a lot of dark colors on here. And so the white, 
makes it stand out. The only one that doesn't stand out so well is this first one. And I think it's because I had ink down. Remember I did the, I did ink on these edges and the ink tends to kind of bleed through paints. So I don't know if even going over that again, it might bring it out a little bit more. I kind of want it, want this to stand out a little bit more so I can go over this, just kind of trace over that, try to bring that one out. Now that I've got my quote on there, that's kind of my, that's kind of like my intention for the, the collage elements that I'm going to pick for this. And I just have a, a little bin here of images that I've cut out and I'm just going to intuitively pick them and start gluing them down into my book. Now, I don't know. I, I'll probably pick some. This one I actually picked because the colors seem to match this background. And sometimes I use color as a way to, to find images. Like this looks really nice just in there. And then other times, you know, I just, I just pick them because I like them. Sometimes I pick images because I don't like them. I always find that really interesting when you pick images that, that you don't like. Because the things that you don't like have something to tell you. I think this is part of a quote. I don't think it's the complete quote, but I'm really trying not to you know, read things as I'm doing this. I'm playing intuitively. And then I can look at it later with a more conscious eye. A lot of times I like to kind of mix these up. And now I am wanting to read this. This is interesting. So I can change this quote. They say time. I don't know. Part of it was missing. They say time things actually changes them. So there was a word missing there. They say time actually changes. So I might, I might write in an S there. I could cut out this. I was going to cut out that S, but I think I'm going to leave that there. Oh, I like that. So you never know which direction you're going to go in. You think you're going to start in, in one place and then you end up in another. And that is the magic with doing these intuitive collage is you just kind of go with what's next. You don't have a plan. You don't know what's going to happen. There's a, a huge trust element 
which I I live by. I live by this this idea of of trust, trusting in something that maybe I can't know right now. Maybe I'm not supposed to know right now. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is this has come out. I really find it interesting that there's nothing there. It's like there's a space, there's an opening, right? And this morning I was writing about dreaming and how moving yourself towards your dreams as opposed to trying to bring your dreams closer to you. I mean, there's two different things. There's a, there's a motion forward and then there's this pulling back, right? So I think that's interesting that uh, this image is in here, her wish. I think I'm I feel complete okay thank you for joining me have a wonderful day and I will see you when I see you bye bye